Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. Today we have a viewer requested tutorial to recreate the MKBHD intro within Apple Motion. So let's jump right in. Go ahead and open up Motion. You can push Command Option N if you don't get the project browser. From there, we are just actually going to select the Motion project. After that, you can set your presets to whatever you like for frame rates and whatnot. And then I'm going to recommend setting the duration to to four seconds because that's about how long his original intro is. The first thing I did was drop in this reference clip of his intro just so that we get an idea of what we're recreating um, and we're going to do the best we can just kind of copying off of this video. So what we're going to do to recreate this backdrop is jump into our library, go to our generators and find the color solid. So we'll just drag that in and actually I want to leave this reference on the very top if I can. So we have our color solid. Let's go ahead and get a base color of this light gray color and let's go ahead and rename this to be the background. After that select your color solid. We're going to go to filters, go down to stylize, add noise. Now you'll see we get this ugly gray noise up here on the edges there. So we're going to change the type over to film grain and it's going to look a little bit better and we're going to disable the auto animate and we're going to make it monochrome so now we just got this white and gray look now we can just drop down the amount way down just so we kind of get a look of what mkbhd had for his backdrop so here's his here's mine so you'll see it's at 0.02 if you like those numbers so we now have a basic backdrop of his video the next thing we want to do is recreate these white dots that appear. So what we're going to do from here, let's go ahead and create a new group and we're going to call this our replicators group because we're going to have multiple replicators in here. We're going to create a circle here and you can make it anywhere in the middle and I'm going to recommend you push shift so it has a perfect radius. After that we're going to go ahead and disable the outline so it's just the fill. Select your circle and go up and push on your replicators and actually I'm going to recommend that we rename this circle to be a white circle and then we'll just have our base replicator click and drag on these corners to get this replicator to be larger than the area of our video and we're actually because we have some animation going on we're going to want to make it even larger than what it is originally so we want to give us a little extra space to work with then we can just drag up our columns to a good amount and our rows to a good amount. Now this is gonna look a little insane, so let's go ahead and drag our scale down, and we'll scoot it way down till it looks similar to what he has in his videos. So we definitely want much smaller and a lot more rows. So what we'll do, we'll go back to our base replicator, and we'll just keep the scale going down a bit more, maybe down to 10% is good, and then we'll drag up our quantity and I would say that's pretty good. So unfortunately we have to see all these ugly X's which makes it a little difficult but if we click off of it we can see them. So we now have our replicator here. Okay so if you're watching his animation you'll see that it's kind of got this watery animation to all of the uh, dots. So what we're gonna do to replicate that is select our base replicator, go up to our filters, go down to distortion and we will find the underwater distortion filter. And you can see if I play back, it's just warping it all over the place, which is actually kind of cool. But we definitely don't want it to be moving as fast as it is. So let's take the speed way down to, I think even 0.1 might be a good spot. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's considerably better. And then from there, let's take our scale and we'll actually scale it up considerably. So let's try three. Let's see how that looks. So now it's kind of got this nice warping animation. And I think that the uh, the refraction amount might be a little bit too much. So we'll take that down to like 50 or so. And you know what? Just looking at his animation, I'm going to say that we need even more dots. So we'll go back here. We'll set our scale to 8% maybe. And then we will just drag up our columns and rows a bit more. So now we've got even more dots to work with. Let's go ahead and recreate the look of the different dots that are vanishing and that's going to bring a lot of depth to this particular animation. We're going to jump on over into our library and we're going to look up the cellular generator. So that's going to create this kind of murky look. We want to drag that in above our base replicator and we'll just call this the cellular mask. Now go ahead, select your base replicator 
indicator, push Command Shift M, or you can right click and add an image mask. Then we're just gonna drag our cellular mask into the image mask. So now we can just call this the base replicator mask. We'll go into our inspector and we'll change the source channel from alpha over to luminance. So I'm going to disable MKBHD's video. And now you can see we've got this really nice looking kind of sparkle effect going throughout the waves. So what we can do to dial this in further is if we jump into the gradient settings of our cellular mask, we can drag the blacks over closer to the white so we can get a bit more contrast out of the two colors. So now we can see defined dots that are vanishing and reappearing, much like what MKBHD has got going on throughout his. And ours might be a bit too intense, so we could go into our, our uh, cellular mask and we can drag the speed down a little bit here so it's a little slower and I gotta hide his again. Just something like that. Now you can totally dial this in to get it as close to MKBHDs as you want, but I'm just gonna keep this tutorial moving along. So the next aspect that we're gonna recreate is the dots actually appearing in. So they kind of start off really large and they shrink down into scale and then they just start moving upwards. So let's go ahead and recreate that. So select your base replicator, go to your properties, find your scale attributes and we'll add a parameter behavior of ramp. Now we're gonna be using ramp a lot to recreate this effect. What we wanna do, let's see how long his animation is right to there. So we're gonna select our ramp, find the end of the animation here, and we'll push O, and that's gonna trim our ramp down. So now the duration of this ramp is going to be that long. Let's go ahead and set the start value to be considerably larger, so our dots are a little bit bigger. So now, oh, I made them way too big. I should have started at the beginning, so we'll shrink them down till they're at the size that we want, somewhere in there. So now if we play through, you can see I'm shrinking down to scale, but it's very jagged and jarring. So we wanna drag up our curvature slider so it's a nice smooth animation like so. After that we want a continual motion of this moving upwards. So to do that we'll just call this the ramp scale and then we'll select our base replicator, find our position stats and we'll find the Y position. We're going to be animating along the Y. So we'll click this down arrow We'll add a parameter behavior and we're going to add in ramp. And so now we can animate this to move up as much as we need. So come to the end and we can set the end value to be a little bit higher. So it's just kind of got this continual vertical animation. So now it's just continually animating vertically just like that. And I think I've made this cellular mask a little bit too intense. So let's go ahead and dial that back as well. What I did is I made it so that there's a little bit of gray instead of black so that all the dots are continually visible but some of them go almost completely invisible. I'm also going to dial up the scale, the size quite a bit, and take the speed down way more. So now we should get a better look here. Perfect, now we've got this really intriguing background going on. Okay, so let's start dialing in the appearing of this. So you'll notice it's kind of got this wipe mask. Uh, it's a large circle that just makes it appear. So let's go ahead and recreate that. We're going to create another group here, new group, and we're gonna call these our image mask group. What we will do is create a circle that we will scale up eventually to fit the entire size. So go ahead, push shift so that it's a perfect circle, and then go ahead and reset the position so that it's directly in the center. And we're gonna call this the circle wipe, and for whatever reason that didn't put it in the image mask, so we're just going to move that around so it's in the proper position. And I also created it way in the middle here, so just come to the beginning and push I. So now it's there for the entirety of the animation. From there, go ahead, find your scale parameter. We're gonna add the parameter behavior again of ramp, and then we'll just come to the end here, and we will set the end value to an amount that's covering the entire screen, and then we can come back to the beginning and set the start value to negative 100%, so it starts from nothing and then slowly grows over time. Go ahead, drag your curvature up, so now this circle has a nice slow grow animation over the entire video. And what I'm noticing actually, it's going way too slow. If we rewatch his, 
everything appears within about um, one second. So we want to make it so that our circle wipe, whoops, I totally misspelled wipe. How did I do that? Let me fix that one. Somebody's probably already typing in the comments. You misspelled wipe. Anyway, so what we need to do is go to our ramp here and we're going to change our end offset. So if I push command eight, we can actually see the keyframes here at the bottom and we'll come forward to about 28 frames or even a full second. And we're just gonna drag up the end offset so that everything is completely covered by that time frame. So now that circle is growing at a good rate. So this is going to drive our image mask. So what we need to do is find our replicators here. And we're actually going to need to put the base replicator in a separate group, which is going to have the image mask. If we apply the image mask to this base replicator right now, it's going to conflict with the cellular mask that we've added. So right click your base replicator, select group, and we'll just call it the base replicator mask group or whatever you want to call it. Then you can push command shift M or right click and create an image mask and then just drag your circle wipe into that. So now it's going to appear over time just like that. So it's looking closer and closer to the MKBHD intro. Perfect. I'm going to push command eight again so I don't see the keyframe editor there. So now let's go ahead and recreate some of those concentric circles that kind of break out over the video at random times. I think he does it to the music. I'm not going to play that music because I don't want to get copyright strike. <laughs> so we have our image mask group. We're going to create a few more circles. Make sure you're at the very beginning so that it's the full length of the animation. And I'll just click and make a circle of any size. I'm going to reset the parameter so it's dead center. And then I'm going to come and disable the fill and just have the outline. I'm also going to increase the size of the outline just like that. Okay, so we need to animate this circle growing. So what I'm actually going to do is select this ramp. I'm going to push option, click and drag and drop it onto this new circle we made. So we have a new animation of this circle growing. From there, I'm actually going to rename this outline mask one. And now I can position this as I need down in this bottom corner. So that's going to grow from that corner. We just need to adjust the scale so that it grows large enough to cover up everything. So go ahead, find the end of the animation. And I actually want it to be a little bit slower. So we are going to set the end offset to zero. So now it's growing over the entirety of the video. And then we're going to set the end value to something that is beyond the scale of our video. So now now it's growing out just like so. And you could apply this to the shape geometry settings in the radius settings instead of to the actual scale and you wouldn't have the width of this object getting larger over time. But um, I actually kind of like how it changes width. So now we're going to find our base replicator mask group again. We're going to right click, add an image mask to that once again, and we are going to drag our outline mask into that. Now. It's not affecting anything because we have the other circle that it's working with. So what we want it to do is actually subtract. So we'll select the mask blend mode to subtract. So now you can slowly see it kind of ripple across just like so. Awesome. So now we could actually even duplicate this outline mask. So we'll push command D to duplicate it and we'll call it the outline mask two. And I'm going to change the ramp scale to object shape radius all. So now it's just affecting the radius. And then I'm going to change the position of this to the center here. And then with it selected, I'm going to find the point that I want it to start growing and I'll push I. So it's right there at the beginning. And then it, it's going to do that explosion, but you can't see it just yet. We don't have it applied to anything as a mask. So we'll just find our base replicator mask group again, add yet another image mask and drag our new outline mask into that point. And then we'll set the mask blend mode to subtract. So now we've got kind of multiple concentric circles working throughout. 
One last thing that MKBHD has for the backdrop is he has a few little points of red appearing. So what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate this base replicator mask. So I'm going to push Command D and we're going to change the name to Red Replicator Mask. And I'm actually going to get rid of copy there. Perfect. And we will go ahead and jump in here and rename everything appropriately. Now what we're going to do is select our Red Replicator, jump in here to the white circle circle copy and we're going to find the color mode. We want to change it from original to colorize and now we can actually change this over to red. So now you can see these dots are appearing as red. So what we want to do is actually invert our image masks here so that they aren't being applied at the same time. So to do that go ahead select your uh, first image mask. We're going to change the mask blend mode over to subtract. So now you'll actually see it starts off with red dots which is kind of cool you might like that um, I'll show you how to fix that if you don't and then we can go to the other image masks here and set these over to add and we'll set that also to add so now we have the original red dots and then we have small concentric circles that are appearing creating these larger circles just like that now, if you don't like the red dots being there at the beginning, what we can do is actually select our red replicator. We'll find a point where they're all gone and then we'll just push I to trim it down so that it's just the length of the points with the concentric circles just like so. So the final section we want to work on is actually creating this rectangle with the nice shadows underneath it. We'll select our rectangle tool. Actually, I'm going to enable the reference just to get the exact scale. We'll click and drag and make this the perfect scale just like that. And now we can disable the reference. Go ahead, jump into your geometry and you can drag up the roundness to whatever you like. Now we're going to want to sample the color from this, which is actually the same color as the backdrop. But if we go into the style, we'll select our fill and we'll just select that edge and we'll also disable the outline. Okay, so now if I disable the reference, we've got our circle here and I accidentally put this in the image mask group. So I'm going to change the group on this. We'll create a new group here we'll call it logo. Okay, so we've got our rectangle. Let's go ahead and create those shadows. So we'll go over to our properties here and we'll go down to our drop shadow settings. Now we'll have two shadows. If you look, he's got a light shadow up here in the upper left and a dark shadow in the bottom right. Let's start with the light shadow. So if I disable his reference, we'll go over to our color and we'll just change it to a lighter color. And let's go ahead, drag up the distance a good amount and we'll change the direction to that top left hand corner, just like so. And then we can blur it like crazy. Now we'll go ahead, get the opacity down a bit, just like so. And I think I blurred it a little bit too much, so we'll just kind of dial that in. And now we have that first light shadow. And again, I've made it a little too intense. So we'll just drop the opacity. So we have our first shadow there. Now go ahead and select the main group that contains the rectangle and we're going to select the drop shadow settings and we can drag it out the other direction. So now we're getting a shadow from everything else dropping to the bottom right and we can drag up the blur again and get it exactly how we want. And now it's looking pretty close to what MKBHD has there. But you'll notice if you look at the reference, it's a little hard to see. There are some faint dots happening in here. So we are going to create one more replicator. So go ahead and come down to your base replicator mask group. We'll push command D one more time and we'll rename this to be the logo replicator. And what we're going to do is actually delete all of the image masks that are happening within this logo replicator. And again, I'll rename this to be logo replicator just like so. Okay, so now let's go ahead and drag this logo replicator to be above our rectangle. And I'm going to disable our reference once again. So we now have this replicator on top of everything. We're going to create a image mask that is going to use this rectangle as its source. So we'll just drag in the rectangle, but we'll need to re-enable the rectangle once we do that. So now we can see the dots that are actually appearing within our object here. You'll notice that they're a little bit too bright. So let's go ahead, jump into our logo replicator. We'll find the white circle. We'll change it over to colorize once again, and we will just drop it down in opacity so that it's very, very subtle, 
just like the MKBHD logo. So now if we play through, you can see the replicator is appearing just behind our rectangle here, which is super cool. Now what I want to also do is delete the base replicator mask so that now all of the grid is completed throughout the backdrop of this rectangle. And now that I've done that, I'm actually going to dial down the brightness even more so that they're even more subtle, just like so. Okay, so the last part we're going to do is animate in this background rectangle. So let's go ahead, jump into our properties and make sure we select the rectangle, I should say. And I'll actually change it to logo rectangle. Find your scale parameters, click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior of ramp. And let's go ahead, look at his reference and see when the growing stops of this object. So it stops right there. So we'll go ahead and push O on that point. That's 26 frames in, just like so. And then we will find our start value and set that to negative 100. So now it's going to grow in just like so. And his actually starts off rounded. So we could go into the shape, go to our geometry settings, and we could even add a ramp parameter to this, or you could just do it by hand. So we could click add a keyframe, drag it way up so it's really circular, and then have it square out towards the end to a value of 50, just like so. And now if we jump into our ramp settings here, once again, let's drag up our curvature so it's got a nice smooth animation. Perfect, and then he has one more animation of it vanishing, so we'll go ahead and select our ramp here, and we'll change it to ramp outro, and then we can move this towards the end here, and then we'll change the start value to zero and set the end value to negative 100. So now it's going to have a nice smooth animation out, just like so. Now, if we watch his reference, let's see, it starts shrinking right at this point. So we'll just drag our ramp outro just a little bit so it matches the same animation. So we've got it popping in and then we've got it zooming out and you could even add that roundness to it again on the way out if you wanted. Now, I would recreate the logo that is going on here, but that is a whole nother tutorial, so that's gonna have to wait for a future video. But what we have created is this really nice looking dynamic background that looks just like MKBHD's logo. Um, his might be a little bit better, but I think he's probably spent more time on it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, you might also really enjoy my Vox animation video that I did for Apple Motion. Thank you so much for watching. If you are a patron, you can download this project file right now. With that being said, I hope to see you in the next one.